Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 1st of October. Residents vote in final phase of provincial elections in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Must have good working relations. Bangladesh Foreign Affairs Advisor on ties with India. And Nepal announces three-day national mourning aid packages for flood victims' families. And now for all the details. Residents of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday cast their vote for the final phase of provincial elections in the federally administered territory. In the third and final phase of the elections, over 3.9 million residents were eligible to vote in the region's seven districts to choose 40 lawmakers for the provincial assembly. Among the seats which went to polls, 16 were in the Kashmir region, while 24 were from the Jammu region. The Tuesday's election also saw West Pakistan refugees exercising their right to franchise for the first time. West Pakistani refugees are those who migrated from areas in Pakistan after the partition in 1947 and settled in the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. Before the abrogation of Article 370, the community did not have voting rights in Jammu and Kashmir. भी सरकार बनेगी उनसे यही एक गुजारिश रहेगी कि जम्मू के लोगों को सुरक्षित करें उनके हकों को सुरक्षित करें यहां पे रोजगार के ज्यादा से ज्यादा जो बेरोजगारी है उसको दूर किया जाए लोगों को मौका दिया जाए और स्किल डेवलपमेंट पे खास तौर पे लोगों को जो है वो प्रशिक्षण दिया जाए उनको ट्रेनिंग दी जाए ताकि लोग अपना रोजगार चला सकें जो 10 साल यहां इलेक्शन नहीं हुआ हमारे लिए बहुत कठिन था वो दस साल बहुत मुश्किल दौर था वो आज हमें ये नुमाइंदा चुनना है जो आवाम की बला के लिए काम करे The voting in the union territory were held for the first time in a decade and the first after the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government abrogated Article 370 which provided special status to Jammu and Kashmir. The special status has been a key point in the elections with regional parties and main opposition in parliament, the Congress pledging to restore the defunct article. However, the BJP has vowed to block any move aimed at undoing those changes and has pitched development and a permanent end to militancy in the border territory. The results for the polls will be declared on 8th of October. Moving on. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday held delegation-level talks with his Jamaican counterpart, Dr. Andrew Holness, who is on a four-day official visit to India. India's Foreign Ministry said the two leaders discussed ways to further strengthen ties and enhance cooperation in trade, investment, renewable energy, digital transformation, development, partnership, education, capacity building and people-to-people -people connects. In a joint press briefing, PM Modi said the visit will not only benefit the bilateral relationship but will also enhance India's engagement with the Caribbean region. He added both countries also agreed to work on reforms in United Nations as Jamaican Prime Ministers extended support for India's candidature in the UNSC. The Jamaican Prime Minister also thanked India for providing vaccines during the COVID-19 crisis. The visit is the first bilateral visit by any Jamaican Prime Minister since the establishment of diplomatic ties after Jamaica's independence in 1962. Pakistan police on Monday registered FIRs against hundreds of PDI party members who staged a protest in Rawalpindi, which later turned violent despite calls for a peaceful gathering by the incarcerated former Prime Minister Imran Khan. Hundreds of protesters, along with Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Chief Minister Ali Amin Gandapur, actively participated in the protest, which was held despite Section 144 imposed by the provincial government. The police arrested more than 100 PDI leaders and workers on various charges, 
such as the Anti-Terrorism Act for violating the ban on protests, shouting slogans against the government and institutions, obstructing the police, damaging police vehicles, snatching weapons and injuring police officials. Meanwhile, the PDI has given a fresh call for country-wide protests for the independence of judiciary, including a demonstration in Islamabad, after three days where all such gatherings are banned. PDI chief Imran Khan has been in jail for more than a year now in multiple cases. Moving on, there is a growing discontent among residents of Pakistan-occupied Jammu in Kashmir over exploitation due to exorbitant rent hikes and the benefits of cheaper electricity that are not reaching them due to systematic corruption. A report. Residents and shopkeepers in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir recently staged a protest against the government's failure to regulate rent and utility charges, expressing their frustration over unchecked practices of landlords. कानून एक रायदारी एक्ट नहीं है कि जो जिसका तनासब हो कि बेसिक राया कितना होगा सालाना कितना बढ़ेगा और इसका एडवांस जो अगर जो आदमी लेगा उसका दुकान और मकान खाली कराने का क्या तरीका कार का तायन होगा ये चीजें सारी रियासत की जिम्मेदारी है। The protesters raised concerns that the benefits of cheaper electricity are not reaching them, flagging the issue of systematic corruption. अगर यहाँ पे बिजली सस्ती हुई है, तो मैं आप लोगों की मौजूदगी में ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि बिजली सस्ती का फायदा लोगों को नहीं हो रहा कि क्यों नहीं हो रहा कि आज भी बिजली के मैक मैक के लोग जा के लोगों के घरों के जो है ना वो जिनके नाम पे मीटर है उनके मोबाइल नंबर ले रहे और वहाँ पे जो है ना वो शिनाख्ती कार्ड की फोटो कॉपियाँ ल इनका कनेक्शन एक किलो मेगावाट पे अगर लिया हुआ है तो आज इसकी बिजली पांच किलो मेगावाट जो है ना वो चल रही है तो लिहाजा ये इसको हम नए सिरे से नोटिस देंगे और ये और पैसे जमा करवाएगा एक चोर बाजारी है एरा फेरी का तूफान है और कोई जो है ना पूछने वाला नहीं है The protest reflects a growing discontent among the residents of POJ K who are demanding accountability and reform from what they call stooge government in the occupied region. Controlled by Pakistan. Bangladesh Foreign Affairs Advisor Mohammad Tohid Hussain, who met India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on the sidelines of UN General Assembly last week, has stated that they both agreed to maintain working relations. The issue of Sheikh Hasina, who fled to India after her ouster, was, however, not discussed, he said. Tohid clarified that everything will go as usual despite the fact that the process of issuance of visas has not achieved normalcy so far. He said, trade has been however going on. He said, they will find a way to serve the people of both countries instead of hostilities and tensions. We have interest in India as much as India has interest in Bangladesh. So, since it's a question of mutual interest, I think the two sides will ultimately uh, come to a position where uh, their interests can be best served. The Bangladeshi official, however, did not make any comments regarding claims that the U.S. manufactured a coup to replace former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, but he said the movement was spontaneous by the younger generations. I really would not like to make any comment on this because uh, we cannot undermine the sacrifices made by the young generation, the students and other youth who laid down their lives for a change uh, from the uh, autocratic regime to, a, to the possibility of a democratic and inclusive uh, future. Uh, it is a supreme sacrifice made, made by the younger generation, which resulted in the change of, uh, uh, the change of government or uh, so please the uh, resignation and the departure of Sheikh Hasina. Sri Lanka will have detailed talks with the International Monetary Funds on the framework of a $2.9 billion bailout program on the sidelines of the lenders' annual meetings in Washington later this month, the country's cabinet spokesperson said on Tuesday.
President Anura Kumara Disanayake has said Sri Lanka will immediately engage with the International Monetary Fund for the third time of its bailout program, the approval of which will see the disbursement of a fourth tranche of about $337 million. Millions of Sri Lankans voted for leftist leader Disanayake in the presidential election in September, the first since the economy buckled in 2022 putting faith in his graft fighting pledge and vow to bolster a fragile economic recovery. Investors worry that the Sanaike's desire to revisit the terms of the IMF bailout could delay future disbursements. But the fears have been somewhat allayed by the new president who said last week that the program would move forward under his administration. Nepal on Tuesday decided to observe three days of national mourning after the deadly floods in Dhatan region killed more than 190 and 31 still remain missing. The Nepal government has also decided to give two lakhs to the families of the victims of the tragic incident. Nepal has also shut down schools. Meanwhile, a survivor recounted his ordeal and said he is grateful to be alive but has lost everything in between. Hill-ranged Kathmandu Valley, which is home to 4 million people and the capital, saw 56 deaths alone and suffered one of its worst devastations in recent years, where rivers spilled over banks and flooded several areas. Experts have blamed poor urban planning and climate change for exacerbating disaster. <laughs> कबाउने आको अब हामी कोठा भारम बसेको हाम्रो सम्पूर्ण चीज बगायो हाम्रो पैसा देखि लिएर सम्पूर्ण अब हामीलाई त बिजोग बनायो सबै केही पनि छैन अब के गर्नु अब यस्तै यो दुःख भन्ने कुरा अब घरको फिस तिर्ने बेला भा बच्चाको फिस तिर्ने बेला भा तर पनि गाह्रो भइराछ मेहनत गर्नलाई अब के गर्ने बग्यो आफु पनि बच्यो धन्नै अब उदार टोलीहरुले हामीलाई बचायो हामीहरु यो दुई तल्ला माथि भएर हाम फालेर यो टिनमा गएर टिनबाट नै हामी बाहिर गएको थियो र उदार टोलीले हामीलाई उद्धार गरेको छ र हाम्रो बिजोग देख्नु भएको छ यही हो यो हाम्रो कोठाहरुको हालत that's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.